Well, the market's already reacting well, and it will continue to react well. I think Bob Iger has not only been smart and innovative, he's also been very wise. He understands that the fundamental thing about a digital economy is that you can go direct to consumer. And he's not burdened by having a cable network, I mean a cable, you know, operator, but he has ESPN and he's shifting that away so that it can go direct to consumer. Now he's doing Disney Plus. And for more than 90 years, the Disney Corporation has known how to create brands. Brands now like Star Wars or Disney or, uh, you know, all the brands that they have, Marvel. And that is something that I think is di differentiates it from Netflix. So all of these things will make this Disney offering very smart. And Farhad, uh, it seems maybe like we're encountering this world where content creators like Disney, uh, Comcast, our parent, uh, for example, and others are creating these content bundles, but there's a question on who are going to be the dominant distributors. Is it going to, again, be the Comcast of the world? Is it going to be the Apples, Amazons, Google, YouTubes of the world? How do you expect this segmenting move by Disney to influence that? Yeah, I mean, I think Disney is sort of stands alone. I mean, it has, it has a lot of content that people want, and it can go directly to consumers and probably get a lot of people. I mean, the, the ESPN uh, service is, seems to be doing really well. Uh, the Disney Plus service probably will do well also. Just knowing my own history with Disney with my two kids, like, we just sort of spend all, uh, all the money on all the Disney stuff, and I feel like we will continue <laughs> to do that. Um, but it, it, I, I think that one problem is, you know, the, the competitors, especially Netflix, are kind of entrenched here. So, you know, you'll get additional signups for, for Disney, but it's, it's sort of a, still will be like a, um, a thing where you subscribe to many services, I think. Um, and if you kind of just want one service, um, Netflix is kind of offering this, uh, you know, all-you-can-eat uh, system that, that has original content for a wider variety of people, especially around the world. Um, so I don't think this is, uh, does much to, to hurt Netflix. I mean, I don't think that's Disney's point. Uh, but, you know, I think the, we, we see a world where many of these can survive and thrive, probably. And Walter, to that point, I mean, do you really think Disney could actually take subscribers away from Netflix? Or given the fact that there's strong branding power for both of these companies, that what it does is actually make it harder for future offerings that maybe haven't hit the market yet to actually be able to bring on subscribers? I think it'll make it harder for things like AT&T and its HBO franchise to now come into the market because you have a huge library with Disney. You even have the Fox library. You've got great brand franchises like we've discussed. You have, and I think they could do even more innovative things. For example, they are not burdened with a cable news uh, network but they have an incredibly good news gathering operation. So part of their bundles could actually be a high class premium news offerings. Uh, likewise, they could even go up against YouTube, which to me is so deeply polluted because Disney is not totally dependent on advertising dollars, which is not the way to go in the future. So you could make a uh, types of social networks and news networks that depend not purely on advertising dollars, which has been shown as a way to really both harm consumers' um, data and also just get your polluted products. Farhad, really quick, I mean, people are gonna wanna try to uh, game out how much progress Disney Plus is making against Netflix. Is the number to watch going to be subs or cash flow or some other metric that we can't see as easily, like views or ad dollars, something like that? No, I mean, at first it probably will be subs. I mean, that may, that's the most sort of straightforward thing. But I think what, what Walter is saying is right, is that um, what's important here is not exactly these services, but more like the cultural change at Disney to, to allow for this kind of innovation. I don't know if Disney Plus is going to be the thing that, that works, but the idea of having, um, you know, this kind of experimentation, this innovation in how you deliver the content, how you bundle it up in different ways, I think that's the thing. Uh, whether or not Disney Plus by itself, and especially in the first, you know, early early incarnation, works, I think that's, mm. you know, that's an important question. But what's more important over the long run is uh, the fact that a big company like Disney is kind of, you know, 
perhaps because it's being forced to because of the competition, but it's really taking this yeah. market seriously and sort of doing a lot to, uh, to signal that it's you know, willing to um, experiment here.